So you're looking for a travel vlogging camera that has a lot of features, doesn't cost too much, and at the same time isn't too big. Well, the Panasonic G9 is for you. And hear me out what is the best travel camera right now available. First things first, it's a Micro Four Thirds sensor camera. Because of this, it's not too big. It is on the bigger side of the Micro Four Thirds system, but at the same time, it's much smaller than like a Canon 1DX Mark II, being at maybe like a one third of the weight, maybe even one fourth of the weight. And that also goes to the accessories and the lens. If you were to look at the battery grip, even if you add this grip, which is like the perfect battery grip, like it looks so good, and when you attach it to the Panasonic G9, it actually looks like a mini 1DX Mark II. But why I'm saying this is it looks good, and even with the battery grip being a little bit bigger than it is right now, it is actually much smaller than anything like a Canon 1DX Mark II, which is really cool, but at the same time, it's not that heavy, not that big. See, the same thing goes with the lenses. The lens selection is really good. This is my go-to camera lens. And what it is, my favorite travel is 12 to 60. Let's focus on that. 12 to 60, which is a zoom lens, but basically on a full frame, this would be times two. So that would be 24 to 120, which is a crazy, crazy, in my opinion, zoom for that price and for that size. It isn't even as big as my hand, like it's pretty much like a in the palm of my hand. And there's even bigger zooms that are like slightly, maybe like this much bigger than this one. Which on full frame would be like a 28 to 280. That's crazy for that small of a lens. Which is why Panasonic is great for travels. Like this is not big. And if I have this on camera, I have even smaller lens in my pocket. So it's really, really usable, really not weighing down. It is very good. The Panasonic G9 has a 20 megapixel sensor. Even though this camera is marketed as like the Panasonic's stills photography, you know, camera, I think it's a perfect hybrid shooter for video and photo. It has a lot of features that the GH5, which is like the video, camera from Panasonic packed into the body but at the same time being better at photos and a much better autofocus like it, this autofocus has blown me away Panasonic has been known for a semi good or even horrible autofocus but this camera has blown me away it's such a good camera for that part and thanks to this, I can actually say I love vlogging with it because it has a reliable autofocus. As for the video features, like I said, it's a lot of things that GH5 would have. Anything like a 4K 60 frames per second or 1080p in 180 frames per second. So there's a lot of features packed into one single body and because it has better autofocus than the GH5, that's where it wins for vlogging. It's much better for vlogging. If you're doing like a setup like right here, you're in a studio, you're in a room, and everything is controlled, you control the focus, then go for a GH5. But if you're going for travel vlogging, which we're talking about right now, this is the go-to camera. You see, the stabilization on this camera is out of this world. And why is that? You see, it has pretty much the best stabilization available. Not even Sony, nobody else comes close to the stabilization that this does and pair it up with a lens like this one that has a power OIS. Basically, it's like the best Panasonic's stabilization in the lens. If you pair it up with the camera that has this stabilization, it actually has a dual IS system, dual st image stabilization system, which is just out of this world. Like, pair these two things out, and pretty much it's a gimbal like smooth footage. So, there will be no point to get a gimbal, this is all you need. It really is gimbal-like. You can really get smooth shots. I actually have a tutorial plan for that, but more on that later. Basically, this is a gimbal-like. You don't need anything else. And then you can even slow it down, put a warp stabilizer, and make it like look like it's pretty much like flying like a drone. This is the closest thing you'll get to a gimbal with your hand. Another thing that it has that the competition lacks is the flip-out screen. On the my right side, like on this side, right now I have the screen, I see myself, I see that I'm in focus, where, that it, my eyes are actually the focus points right now, and the time, everything, I can see the audio levels, everything. Now take this outside, you would have to actually depend on your camera's auto settings 
if you did not have the flippy screen, you would have to depend that the camera is doing a good job, that the camera is keeping up and it's not bad, both for autofocus and for settings like, am I blown up or something? No problem with this because you have that flip screen here, so if you are vlogging, you can actually peek and see, okay, this is too dark, this is too bright, we have to turn it down a little bit. Thanks to this, I can actually fully manually vlog, which is a good thing. I can see that everything is working, the audio levels, everything is there for me to see. Even for a setup like this, I can see myself on the side, which is really, really cool. See, this is where it all comes to be why this camera is much better than any other camera that you would think of, like Sony a7 III or Canon 1DX Mark II. You see, the reason, the biggest reason between those three cameras, why I would choose this one over the other ones, is the price. Being at $1,200 right now on Amazon, I think, for a sale, usually is at $1,500, so $1,500 for a camera with those features? That is like blowing out of the water. The same features mostly you'll find on Canon 1DX Mark II or Sony a7 III. Okay, both of them have full frame sensors, so a little bit more bokeh, but or other than that, not much of a difference in terms of features. Better stabilization, having the flip out screen, being much more compact. Like this weighs about one third or one fourth of the weight of Canon 1DX Mark II, so it's like Think about that, how much you're saving, like even the lens size is so good and the lenses have such big range that it's just crazy, like you can have one lens for everything if you wanted to, 14 to 140 Panasonic. In my opinion, for travel vlogging or vlogging in general, this is the best camera out there right now. And comparing the price, like you said, about $1,200 compared to like $4,000 for the Canon 1DX Mark II or maybe like $2,000 for the Sony a7 III. This is for me no competition. I would take Panasonic G9 over them any time of the day because of the features that it packs. And if you're gonna say that, you know, the autofocus isn't that great compared to Sony or Canon, you know what? Try the G9 and then we can talk. G9 is pretty much like a whole different ball game. So I hope that actually helped you decide on your next travel purchase. But before we end this video, I wanted to show you guys one more thing. If you're a creator or you want to see travel stuff or you already have a channel dedicated to travel, check this out. You see, Travel the World, actually that's my photo, but anyway, basically this group, Travel the World, is a group for like-minded people that want to share their creations their thoughts, opinions, maybe ask questions. Anybody and anything to do with travels, you're invited to join this page. It's gonna be the first link in the description. And that's where we want to create a community of like-minded people. And by the way, I got this shirt as a gift and look at this. Where is it? Plugged. That's such a nice gift. Like, I'm so happy of it. Like, look, it's my, my photo on a shirt. Isn't that so cool? I like it. That's a really cool gift. Okay, second thing I wanted to say before we end this video is if you want to support this channel, if you want to help me grow this channel, there is a Patreon link. It's gonna be the second link in the description. Basically what it is, you can help support this channel and then in return you get certain stuff. Depending on how much you spend, that's how much you're gonna get back. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope I actually helped you decide on your next travel camera. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I hope you guys enjoyed this video once again and I'll see you next time.